thought I would do a little video showing uh, what I've been up to lately. Um, oh, in case you're wondering, I know some of you will be happy to know my mojo has finally come home. Um, I don't know where it was. It was a little tight-lipped about um, what kind of an adventure it had been on. <coughs> Excuse me. But I chose to forgive and forget. You know, as long as it came back, I'm happy. It's all good. So, uh, anyway, I have been taking advantage of this recent little surge of mojo energy to get ready for some uh, craft shows that are coming up this spring that I've signed up for. They're just small local craft shows and I've never done a craft show before. So, um, I don't know. It'll be interesting. I don't, I don't really have a lot of high expectations because they are small ones and I really want to start with small ones just to see what they're like and see if I want to do a bigger one. But, um, you know, a bigger one, <coughs> sorry, allergies, excuse me, bigger ones will be for later on because they tend to be more expensive and I don't want to invest too much until I'm sure that that's what I want to do. Okay, I had to pause and have a little coughing fit. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, whoops. Okay, anyway, I, um, the craft fairs that I've signed up for, there's just a small, you know, you basically get an eight foot table and barely enough room to walk around it. So I kind of set up my dining room in the same sort of, um, measurements that my little booth will be, <coughs> kind of, sort of, so that I could see exactly how much stuff I could fit. And, uh, um, I'll show you what I've got. Okay, we're going to move. Take your Dramamine. Here we go. I started out just going to do some books and journals, but then I thought, well, mm, I don't know if that's a good idea because I might need some more, oh, I don't know what, what you would call it, more mainstream type stuff, I guess, because, <clears throat> you know, junk journals, if somebody goes to my Etsy shop, and buys one of my junk journals, chances are they went there because they're looking for junk journals. They know what they are and they went looking for it, right? But at a craft fair that's open to the public, people might not really understand junk journals. And I'm going to have one there that's kind of finished so that they can see what they can do with it. But I didn't want to rely solely on that <coughs> for sales. I took my allergy pill this morning, but I may need another one. I'm kind of, I'm kind of dying here. Ugh. Okay. I'll try to get through this. So, um, anyway, I have these, I had some crocheted market bags that I'd made and thought that I would just add those to the booth too, because they're a little more, you know, people can figure out what to do with those, um, <clears throat> pretty much. So let me show you what I've got. <clears throat> Golly. I may have to go back on allergy shots. This is crazy. Okay. I've got some of these market bags. <laughs> I can't get in front of the camera because I'm gross. I'm painting today. And so, um, yeah, gross doesn't even begin to describe how it looks. So I'm trying to do this in a weird way. Anyway, all of the market bags have two sizes, big ones. And small ones, and I have a bunch more small ones to make. I'm not through yet. But they all have this little, see, they fold up into themselves. And then the handle goes in there. And then it's got this little thing that you close it up. So you can just throw those in your car. I like to keep a couple of them in the console of my car so that I've got them. I never remember to take them with me to the grocery store. <clears throat> so I find that if I just keep a few in the car at all times then I'm safe. You know, I've always got them. So I've got those in two sizes. And then I've got some of these. I don't know if you can see these um, water bottle holders. I love these, and I use them all the time. I don't know if other people will, too, but because I carry water with me everywhere. And it's just so convenient to 
stick it in one of these because then I can throw it in my bag <clears throat> and the bottle won't sweat in my purse or whatever, you know? So I made up several of these and I've got some more of these I'm going to make. Um, so I'm going to see how those do. And <laughs> my husband, I was showing this to him and I guess I was holding it funny. I was holding it like this. And he didn't know what it was, and he said, oh, it looks like a junk jacket. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it is not a junk jacket. It is a water bottle holder, I promise you. Although, I guess if your junk fits, you know, whatever. Anyway, that's what those are. <clears throat> um, and then I've got some... I've got a little basket full of uh, journals right here, and they're just some sort of, some of the little folios that I've made, and some hardback journals, and some of these I've had, you know, forever in a day, and they just need to go. I need to get rid of them. So, stuck those in there, and then I've got up here, this is a, um, th those are my... Well, they're not really business cards. I guess they're more like calling cards. They're just, you know, little cards. It's just got my Etsy shop address on there because anyone who wants to contact me can contact me through there. <coughs> I didn't want too much information on there, you know, because I don't want people like calling me and stuff because that would just be way too much personal contact and I'm not really all about that. So that's all my business card is. And I have a bunch of extras made up too in case I need them. And those I just made with my Cricut cutter. You know, die cutter thing. Cut the shape out, glue them together. It's really, really kind of easy. And I've got one more of these that I'm working on. And I don't know, I call it like a spa set. I don't know what to call it. But it's just a little container. You open it up, and this is a little headband to hold your hair back, and then it's got face scrubby cloths, <coughs> excuse me, to wash your face with. And I actually use these. I have one of these up in my bathroom, and I love it, because um, these are all cotton um, scrubby cloths, you know, so they're... They're gentle on your face. They're easy to wash. All of this stuff is made out of cotton yarn, so it's all washable. And then, you know, you can hold your hair back while you're washing your face. And I just love these. I don't know if anyone else will, but I guess we'll see. So I've got, I'm probably just going to take three of those <coughs> to the thing. And, I, okay, I can't really, I can't really get far enough back to get a good picture of the whole thing here because I'm in my dining room and it's kind of small. But I found this hutch was an, a white, it's made out of a, what you call it, MDF. It was in my attic when we moved in the house. I guess the previous owners left it or whatever. <clears throat> it was kind of gross. And I saw it there. I didn't have any use for it, so I just left it. But, it, you know, it's kind of been in the back of my mind all this time. And then when I started putting the boot stuff together, I needed something for height, you know, because you need height in your booth. And I don't have any kind of, you know, like a backdrop curtain thing. This isn't, these shows that I'm doing are indoors, so I don't need a tent <clears throat> or anything like that. And I'm not going to buy a um, booth, you know, backdrop deal unless I find that I'm going to do this often and want to invest in that. So, um, I was just looking around for anything to add height to the, my little craft table, and then thought of that hutch up in the attic. So I dragged it down, and I painted it, and I just used my, um, homemade chalk paint, which is just, I think I've posted about that before, haven't I? I don't know. Well, if I haven't... To make your own chalk paint, you know, you can buy the expensive Annie Sloan type or you can just make your own, And which I have found, <clears throat> okay, I have not bought the Annie Sloan paint and used it, but I do have a couple of friends who have, and they've said that the homemade recipe is every bit as good. 
it's almost exactly the same you just take some uh, plaster of Paris and you dissolve it in an equal amount of hot water so same amount of plaster of Paris same amount of hot water and then you add three times as much paint any kind of paint acrylic paint latex paint not oil based any kind of water based paint and mix that all up and I just used a it was like an interior house paint a flat finish mix that with your dissolved plaster of Paris and then you have chalk paint um, it becomes the consistency of about kind of like maybe yogurt or pudding and you know it goes on so smooth and easy it covers and usually in one coat um, I always do too just cause but um, anyway that's what I use because it takes very little prep work and very little finishing to get it to look good and I just painted it a kind of a baby blue color and then antiqued it with a brown and then went back and dry brushed some white on there because those are the only paint techniques I know how to do. I can paint, I can antique it, and I can dry brush. Those are my three fancy faux finishing paint techniques. It's all I've got. <laughs> so I use those on everything. But you know what? Works for me. Um, and then I thought, well, I would dress it up a little bit. So I had a stencil that I got on clearance somewhere. And then I just stenciled that on there with some acrylic paint, which I think looks okay. Um, I made the banner. I actually love the banner. And my Etsy store and my YouTube channel both are called By Shannon Green. So that's, that's why it says By Shannon Green. And there are no spaces because someone has pointed out before that, oh, there needs to be a space between By and Shannon Green. Well, the address for both my Etsy shop and YouTube channel, it, it's all one word, by Shannon Green. So there are no spaces in there on purpose. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but how I made the banner is I just sewed some pieces of this. This is a scrap piece of muslin, and I think that was a painter's drop cloth scrap. Sewed them together and then put a piece of an old dictionary page on there and then I don't know if how well you can see it but um, oh, I cut the letters out of some scrapbook paper I used my Cricut cutter for that glued it onto the dictionary page and then just got my sewing machine and just did that crazy sewing you know just all over in circles and everywhere just to kind of hold everything down and give it some texture okay I muted my phone and refilled my coffee, so I think we're good to go. And I forgot where I left off. Um, I was talking about how I made the banner, right? Did I? I think I did all that. Oh, and I, I just used a piece of, this is some ball chain, because I had a big spool of it. And my intention was to sew some, I have some kind of big jump rings, and I was just going to sew some on each one, you know, to run the chain through but I had used these safety pins when I was making it just to kind of you know for a quick way to string it on there to make sure I had the size right and everything but then when I got all done I thought well you know I don't know the safety pins kind of work for me um, you know I'm kind of liking them I'm digging the safety pins so I'm gonna leave them at least for now they serve their purpose and it's like a, a lot easier than having to sew a jump ring on each and every little triangle so yeah I'm good with that for now um let's see oh rubber stamps I, these are I added these at the last minute and this particular this one craft show that I'm doing um, doesn't require everything to be handmade and so I asked if I could sell some gently used rubber stamps and she said yes so I just got these out these are the trays are just the cardboard thingies that um, cases of water bottles come in and I just painted them and then um, put the stamps in them and then what I also did just to in case anyone wants to see and you know make sure that the stamp actually stamps clearly I did make a little 
you know, I stamped the image on some paper underneath. Because sometimes it's not always clear on here what they are. Especially if it's a, you know, that was a homemade mount. I mean, you can't even see what that is. So I've got the little reference thing there. So hopefully I can get rid of some of those. And if not, they will go on. Uh, I'll probably stick them in my Etsy shop. Because they, they need to go to a new home. Uh, let's see. I had a few leftover cupcake pin cushions that I made a while back. So I put those out. And then these I did. This is the only thing I've had to buy for this craft show. Um, and they're not here yet. Oh shoot, I left my other one upstairs. Anyway, these are little pin cushions. I actually called these a guest room sewing kit is what I call them. Because I have it in my guest room and that's where I keep it. But it's got the little pin cushion top. And these are little jars that some um, nicer hotels, if you get room service, they put their ketchup and jelly and stuff in jars like these. And, you know, you can't not take them home. So, yeah, ended up with a bunch of them. My mom actually collected them. But inside the jar are just a, an assortment of spare buttons and safety pins. And what I had to order was some more of those little tiny wooden spools. You know what I'm talking about. They're just the little bitty ones. But I just wrapped some uh, white thread around one of those little baby spools and stick in here. So that there's some, you know, a needle and thread and pins. And I think these would be just good gifts, too, for somebody. So, anyway. I've ordered the little spools, and as soon as I get those filled up, those will be finished. And um, these are the journals, some of them. that I had. This is actually all I was going to do in the beginning, and then started just adding stuff. Um, but these are the junk journals, and there's several different styles. Some of them, you know, this one has some... Uh, inclusions and you know taggy things and it has some painted papers and scrapbook papers on the inside and it has some sewn uh, pockets and things so that one will be a little bit more expensive than some of these others this is just the the basic ones I'm gonna make a bunch of these because I really wanted just a bunch of inexpensive like $10 journals and I hope that someone would pay $10 for that I don't know I would. I think I would. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's got my um, painted, hand-painted papers on the covers, and then um, the insides of these, there's no sewing, no pockets, no tag inclusions or anything, but it is a, just a variety of repurposed papers and envelopes, and my goal, is, this is not something I normally do in my junk journals, but for these particular ones, I made sure that like every page has some kind of, you know, I want that turn. There we go. Some kind of appropriate writing surface. Because on a typical junk journal, you know, if there's like a cool magazine page, I usually won't put anything over it. You know, I'll leave it. But I'm trying to think, okay, mainstream is, you know, will people know what to do with that page? Will they know that they can stick their own paper on there or stick a picture there or something? They might not. So I made sure that, you know, pretty much every page has some kind of writable surface on it so that it won't confuse people who've never actually used a junk journal before. And then I will have, you know, a couple of finished journals for them to look through to get some inspiration. So I'm really hoping that these will go because I'm going to, I don't know how many I have here, five or six. And I'm probably going to make at least another. I have four more almost finished upstairs. And then I have enough covers ready for about another five more. Um, so I don't know. I'll see how they do. And... Uh, you know, hopefully if I keep them inexpensive enough and have a, a sample of how they can look, 
then that'll be okay. And there's no closure or decoration on the front because my goal is to keep the cost down on these, um, you know, at this time for th these particular craft shows. So that's all it is. And I just use their simple um, sewing machine stitched not very neatly down the middle and uh, after I stitched all the pages in then I went back and laid the cover out and put another layer of Mod Podge over it to seal it which also helps to kind of reinforce the stitching here and you know anytime you sew through paper you're gonna get some white you know because um, even if it's a printed paper, the pulp underneath is white. And when you poke the hole in it, it's going to show. You know what I'm talking about. So there's these little white dot thingies. So I went down the spines of each one and just sort of took a, I took some of my uh, pit pens, brush markers, and just kind of covered up that white as much as I could. And then just took my finger and put another layer of Mod Podge just right on the spine and let it dry. So it, it just kind of reinforces it. So they should be pretty sturdy. You know, even though it's made out of a junk mail postcard and the painted paper is a magazine sheet. And, you know, neither one of those are what I would consider to be a super sturdy book cover. But I think together with all the Mod Podge and everything, I think they're going to work. So that's those. This one is one, this is this will be much more expensive than those. It's one of my fancier ones that I had left over. I think it's still on my Etsy side. It hasn't sold, so I'm gonna see if somebody here wants to buy it. But it's got the uh, fabric and paper collaged cover on it. So um, yeah, that's those. And um, I think that's everything I will have in my booth. There's one other show. There's one. The first one I'm doing is on like April 16th or something. And um, they're the kind that limits what you can have. You know, they don't want like two jewelry booths. You have to tell them specifically what you're bringing so that there's only one booth of each kind of thing, which I think is great. Um, so I had to sign up for just these specific things. But another one that I'm doing later, it's they don't care what you bring. You can bring anything. So I might have some jewelry and stuff in that one. Um, and maybe some of the other things that I've made. I don't know. But anyhow, that's what I'm working on right now. And I will, I'm going to go make some more journals. And I might just do a little video of that process, which is just really kind of boring because there's nothing to it. You choose the papers, you fold them in half, you sew them down the middle, and there you have it. Um, yeah, okay, now that I've thought about it, there's not much point in doing a video of that. So, uh, hmm, I'll think of something else. Um, okay, that's it for now. The end.